I'm Lisa, the artist behind Lockery Fine Art. Today I'm going to go over my top seven favorite supplies for working in graphite. Number one on my list is the paper that I use. My favorite brand is Strathmore. There are three different finishes that I really like. One is the vellum, the other is the smooth finish, and the last is the medium. The paper that I choose depends on what it is I'm going to be working on. I really like the smooth paper. The problem with that is if I need to get my darks really, really dark, you're kind of limited. Your, your graphite or carbon pencil, whichever you choose to work with on it, doesn't really stick as much. There's very, very little tooth to that paper. If I want my darks really dark, then the medium is a good choice. And this one's only an 80 pound weight. It's not as heavy as the other two. I definitely prefer have the heavier, thicker paper whenever I can use it. More often than not, I go with the vellum. It's kind of in between the two. It's not quite as smooth as smooth, but it's smoother than the medium, and I can still get my darks fairly dark. Number two on my list are my erasers. The first is my electric eraser. This one is, I can't even begin to try to say that. It doesn't really matter. I've used a few, and as long as the little tip spins, I'm happy. This will help you get a lot of the finer detail that a regular eraser can't get. Because the tip spins, it will pull off more of the graphite. I also like these pencil type erasers. The only thing I don't like with these, they have they usually have a pink tip. The pink in the eraser can come off onto your paper, so the color can. And if you're working in graphite and pink gets on there, there's really nothing you can do about it unless you cover it with a lot of graphite. But you can sharpen them to a pretty fine point so that alone can make it worth the risk. Next are my kneaded erasers. These I use when I want a really soft effect on something where I'm lifting off just a little bit and I don't want harsh edges where the eraser marks started and stopped. Right now my absolute favorite eraser are these Vanish erasers. I've only been able to find these from Jerry's Artorama online. I'm not sure if you can get them anywhere else. I don't know what it is about these things, but they will pull out more graphite or even colored pencil than any, even more than the electric eraser. You don't have, can't get as fine of a tip as you can with the electric eraser, but they're really, really, really good. What I've been doing when I do need finer detail with them is taking a razor blade and just cutting edges of them off. So I've got this little teeny tiny piece of it, and that works out really nicely as well. But yeah, of all of these, this one, the Vanish, and the Electric Eraser are two absolute must-haves for me. Number three on my list are my pencils. I'm in a handy little case. For my softer leads, well, no, these would be my harder leads that give a softer line, I have my Prismacolor Turquoise set. They range up to 6H, so that gives you a very, very light mark. For my softer leaded pencils, I'm using Derwent Graphics. These ones range up to 9B, which is a very dark lead. When I need my graphite to be really, really dark, I have two different types that I use. One is a mechanical pencil, and this is what I get with my finer detail areas. And in that pencil, I have AN 4B 5mm lead. This stuff I can only find online. I haven't found an art store that carries this dark, the 4B. The 4B with the mechanical pencil is going to get you darker than the 9B in the Derwent Graphics. This stuff is amazing. When I have a larger area that I need to get really, really dark, I switch over to my General's Layout in Extra Black. This is a great pencil for getting things really, really dark. It's not quite as dark as the mechanical pencil with the AN lead, but it's still very dark. Along with my graphite pencils, I'll often use a Wolf's Carbon Pencil. The carbon pencils are sort of somewhere in between charcoal and graphite. It'll get you really, really dark, a lot darker than the graphite will get, but it's not quite as soft as an actual charcoal pencil. The carbon pencils blend a lot smoother. They're a lot easier to work with for larger blending areas. For the finer detail, I'll usually switch back to my graphite. One of the things that we have a tendency to do as we're working is brush, use the side of our hand to brush away eraser marks. The problem with that is you smear your work and you get the side of your hand ends up black, which ends up getting handprints or side of your handprints all over your work. The solution to this is to go and get a brush to actually brush those shadings off of your paper. Number five on my list is a clipboard. I use masking tape to tape down my paper to the board. This keeps it from sliding all over the places you're blending or using a lot of pressure with the pencil. I prefer regular masking tape. I like a lot of high tack on my tape. Many artists like the blue painter's tape, which is definitely a good way to go as well. I avoid the blue painter's tape because I don't like that color at all on my paper and I don't want to look at it for hours on end. Um, and I do like a higher tack tape. I don't want to continuously have to be pushing the tape back into place. 
This can rip your paper. You have to be careful with that. I use a heavy enough weight paper. It's not a real problem for me. I just pull it off slowly. And I use paper that's big enough that if I were to rip it a little bit, I just trim the edges off anyway, so it really doesn't affect me. But you'll want masking tape to tape down your work to your clipboard. Number six on my list of favorite supplies for graphite is my Outlight. I actually have one for the floor and one hooked up to my easel that are larger, and then when I'm working on graphite at a desk, I will switch to my smaller tabletop lamp. These tabletop Outlights are fairly inexpensive, but they still have the benefit of the larger versions where you're getting the natural daylight glow. This allows you to see a lot more detail more clearly than where you're using a normal table lamp. Number seven on my list are my blending tools. I like to have these in two sizes, one very, very thin, and then one larger. I usually will keep one that's very dirty like this, or you can see I've got a couple of them that are very, very dirty, and then I keep a couple that are clean for finer detail areas that are going to be a lot lighter. Now art stores like to sell these little sanding blocks so that you can sand these down to a finer point. These don't need to be sharpened. I've been using this one for probably 10 years. You can see it's kind of worn down, but they're so inexpensive. If they get worn down, you're better off buying a new one than sharpening them. When you sharpen them or file them down on those sanding blocks, they have a tendency to rough up the edge. Those rougher edges show when you're doing blending. You can end up with little lines and stuff that you wouldn't have had there had you left them smooth like they were when you purchased them. I also have a couple of blending cloths. I like these for blending large areas. I have new painting and drawing videos every Wednesday, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with my newest work.